That should be pretty close. So yesterday while I was in town, I picked up a multi-ball hitch for pulling this thing around. <clears throat> what I'm gonna work on now is the um, starter disengagement issue. <clears throat> wow. Oh, chain. I believe it to be just a matter of uh, getting it lubed up and stuff. All right, so the starter is over here. I'm gonna to have to remove this starter to see what's going on with the Bendix. So there's the ground. Oh, it looks a bit frayed. There's ground here, and then you've got your power here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, disconnect the battery, and then pull the starter off. So let's get started. Oh. This is this is barely on. Didn't even need the wrench for that. Same with this. Wow. At least this is a new terminal. It's got some tape on there. So don't need to be crossed. And uh, I did notice that one was laying on top of the other one like this. That could cause some vibration and wear through. That is really limited on how far it can reach much further and I'm going to have to uh, put a new cable on here which probably wouldn't be a bad idea all right so now that's disconnected let's remove all this stuff over here all right so let's go ahead and hit it with some uh, water dilution formula number 40. There's the ground cable. And then we've got the power. This is of course coming off the relay. So the power goes directly to the starter relay. And then from the starter relay goes over to the starter. had a, a lock washer on there. All right, so that's the easy stuff. I don't think the uh, other bolt's going to be super difficult, but uh, oh, it looks like there's four. Four of these. Let's see if they're all the same size. Uh, yep. See if we can get you in there so you can see. All 
I'm going to leave that top bolt in because once I get the rest of these loosened, <clears throat> all right, this might work a little bit better. There we go. There are times where I wish I had a big YouTube channel so I get sponsors like PB Blaster and some of the others. Yeah. All right, got that one out. So that one's almost off. It's not coming loose, so we must have another bolt up in there somewhere. You guys can see better than I can. There's grass and webs up in there. I might have to get a mirror. Looks like there is a plate back here. You guys tell me if there is. Uh, yeah, looks like there's a plate back there with a couple of bolts on it, supporting the back part of the starter. So I need to get in there and It's kind of hard to get to. I get the plate off, I hope. Ah, yes. Okay, good. Now let's see. Oh yeah, she's loose now. Uh, sorry, the camera angle isn't that great. Camera keeps doing weird stuff on me. All right, so there is a cable on this one. Probably an extra ground. Uh, yay. All right. Take a look. Yeah, the Bendix is out still. It's not going back. So this means we need to take it apart. To take it apart, we're going to have to remove these two nuts here, uh, bolts. Those two bolts get inside and then uh, take it off from here, the housing, so I can get access to all that. So, let's start on that. There are times I wonder about myself. <laughs> Why am I making it so hard on myself? How much faster that is? Got a little bit of dust in there, nothing bad. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think that's supposed to be in there. <laughs> uh, sawdust. Thank you. 
If only I had an air compressor. Oh man, look at all that. Wow. That is a lot of sawdust just be sitting around inside a starter. Goodness. Oh, why don't I have an air compressor? Well, some of you guys may or may not know my story. For the last two years, we've had everything that we've owned in storage. We sold our house in Dallas, Texas. <clears throat> and uh, before we sold our house, since we knew we were going to have put everything in storage, I went ahead and sold a lot of my stuff, including my very nice air compressor. Um, I had several of them. All right, so now I need access to those screws down here, which allows this to separate. Uh, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that until I remove the um, contacts brushes. So, let's see, will this work on there? I don't think so. No. Oh, boy, I got lucky with that one. biggest fan of being shocked. I will say the brushes look great. That's that brush. All right, that gets that off. There you go. So I could have just left that in, in there. Sawdust. Clean that out for sure. But it looks good. The armature on there is great. A little wear, but definitely working. And there we go. Now this looks fairly new. More WD-40 down in there. That's how it's sticking out. It's spring-loaded. It shouldn't do that. It should come out like that and then spring-load back. See a little rust there. So after we got our stuff back from Dallas, um, we unloaded some in the garage, some in the cabin, and then had to rush back to training. And so because of that, uh, looks like in the garage, basically it just exploded. It's not really that bad. As you can see, it's working now, but now I'm just going to give it some lube. It's nice that my side-by-side -side comes with this built-in workbench. For those of you who are very familiar with electronics, don't worry, my greasy hands are not going to mess this up because I'm going to clean that with uh, electrical cleaner. Before I put it back in. She's working good now. Just as I looked down and saw my shiny golden ring this month is uh, my anniversary. In fact, just next week. And uh, 12 wonderful years of marriage with an amazing woman. 
who prefers not to be in most of my videos. Now that's stuck. So that tells me I don't have it clean enough or not enough lube on there. I don't want it to stick on occasion. I really like to take this off. I'm looking to see if there's a clip inside here. Holding it on and yes, there appears to be. Oh, good. I'd really like to get that off and clean that better. Because it was so hard to get off. I might as well take it all the way off. So yeah, there's a Inside here is a little clip that if you take that clip out, it'll release it. So let me try that. I say try because I may not be able to do it. I've got the tools for the C clips and E clips. But this one right here is just a circular clip with just a little tab sticking out. Yeah. Now, whether or not I can get it back in there, I don't know. But there's the clip. I'll leave that right where it's at. That'll be good. That's yeah, pretty dirty up inside there. All right, well, I found my emery cloth. This is a little bit coarser than what I want, but this will work. Those of you who sharpen chainsaws know what this file is. It is what I wanted was emery cloth. Although that says it's emery cloth, it is way more coarse. Not quite 80, but it feels like a 100 grit. Eighty grit. Yeah, see that's that's way, way too way too coarse. I just want a thin light coating, so I'll just use an ATF, just a light coating, because the more grease you have, the more that sawdust will cling to it. <sighs> Got a million tasks here. Wow, that actually went in well. A little bit of the oil. Take a look at this dirty thing. Oh, where's that right? There we go. All right. This is a copper bushing in here. And of course, there is a lip on the outside, so this can't go out too far. Oh, no lip there, but definitely a lip there. So that tells me that it's actually not supposed to be a lip. It's just worn. Let's see how badly it's worn. Oh yeah. So that bushing right there, it's, it's pretty well worn. It needs a new bushing. But 
I'm not going to worry about it right now. This will start up probably 20, 30 times while I own it. And I know about the bushing. <laughs> At least I know about it now. Always make sure you get your screws and bolts started before using some type of an impact or something like that. I want a better feel of how tight I'm getting these. <clears throat> a couple of friends of mine uh, that I watch on YouTube, they, uh, they must hail from Germany because they, when they tighten these up, they get them guten tight all right as you see i'm not using the the arm of the ratchet i'm just the t the head those who are professionals at rebuilding starters probably know the exact torque specs minus that's good and tight As John, my friend from Farmcraft 101, would say is, click. There you go. That's torqued to arm spec. Man, this is a clean looking starter. I don't know how old it is. And I really wish I had an air compressor right now. Oh, you know what? You know what? I brought a little tiny one. Yeah. I've got a little tiny one somewhere. Let me go figure out where. This is a mess I was talking about. And it's a horrible mess in here. Yeah, so I've got this little tiny one right here. It's noisy. And somewhere around here I have the line for it. There it is. And two things. One, the uh, tire inflator and the blower. Yep, that's what I need. Ah, just trying to find stuff is a pain. This has an alignment pin. So there's the pin and there's the notch. Alrighty. That looks good. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Doesn't look like it, so that's good. Now comes the harder part. Getting this to go back on there. Two, three, four. Hey, I did it, yay. Origami. And I'll tighten it all the way until I get all the rest of the screws in. Okay, so what I was just talking about is making sure that this wire is up on top. That looks good. Good. 
tighten them all by hand so I can see how tight they are. Torque these to arm spec. This has grease down in it, and I do want grease. I should have put it in this one. Still can. Let me go grab some grease. careful not to get any of this grease too far down onto the uh, rotor or the contacts on the back of the rotor oh, yeah. much better mo better mo better mo better What I'm doing is looking down in there and make sure these holes are lining up. That one started. So as you can see, these starters are really simple to work on. I don't understand why people want to take them to a mechanic to work on it. As you see, it's, it's not much to them. And again, I like to feel the torque. Click. All right, so there was a little bit of trash here, but all in all, the teeth look really good on the flywheel. There's some more. The guy was was chipping up hay bales to spread out over a, an area <clears throat> that he was working. All right, so that looks good. Here's the wires that uh, are on that back nut. And uh, that's just because it's uh, ground. But I'm going to clean that terminal so it's a little more shiny before I put that back on. And I might as well clean this with a wire brush as well. So let me get to that. All right, so everything went back in just the way it came out, only in reverse order. Now all I have to do is hook up the wiring here. I'll get this tightened up and then uh, connect the battery and we'll see if she's still sticking. Before connecting the battery and connecting the starter Bendix and all that back there, I cleaned all the contacts. So now I think I've got everything hooked back up properly. Let's give it a try and see if that starter stays engaged this time. All right, let's turn this on. Turn this start, here goes nothing. Yay! Didn't stay engaged. All right, so she's running. Got the carburetor popping.
guess I should have turned that back to run. But yeah, there's a there's a few things. First of all, the carburetor, as you can tell, it's popping. Uh, smells like gasoline, so it's burning more than it really should. It's not being efficient. Uh, looks like sawdust or something inside, inside there. I uh, haven't checked the fuel tank to see how full it is or not full. Uh, it's way down there towards the bottom, so it needs some fuel in it. Uh, this is wobbling around. I don't know if that's normal. I see a bolt there that has a nut on it, and the nut's loose. I don't know if that's supposed to be loose or not. It's wobbling around. I'll tighten that a little bit. Oh, let's see. Alrighty, let's see what she'll do.
All right, well, for her first time, she performed poorly. So besides the fact that it uh, wouldn't feed initially, I think those knives are too dull that are pulling it in and feeding. The motor is definitely not strong enough. Um, and then finally, at the very end, it got to where it wouldn't feed at all. So uh, now it's stuck. So I'm going to have to lift up that feeder um, and work on the blades. So we got more work to do. I guess it's great content for the channel, but I'd like to just be able to use it. I told you she was rough. If I told you I know what I'm doing, I would be totally new, a complete lie. Um, never worked on a machine like this before. But fortunately, this machine is fairly basic and straightforward. Right now, the issue that I have is that the feeder is not turning. Now, there must be some type of a bypass either up in the valve or in the motor that once it reaches a certain point, it will allow the fluid to, you know, not turn the motor. Otherwise, you could snap off a shaft or break something if it was powerful enough. Or maybe they just make the motor so underpowered that it wouldn't cause an issue. However, uh, I think a chunk of wood is stuck up in there. So somehow I need to raise that up. So I'm not 100% sure that this is the way it goes, but it looks like it. I've got that pinned into there. Got some blocks down there. Now, supposedly, I should be able to just crank this up. I got these springs off of there. I'll see how far I can take this. Let me look at the other side. So I'm not binding up anything. Oh, springs just laying on there. And yeah, it looks like it'll just keep going for right now. Let's see how far we can go with it. That's about it. Really need some better light. It looks like this piece might have been the piece. it that's all that was there and that was what was stopping it and then here's what the blades look like the feeder blades that is oh there's one piece right here surely this little tiny piece wasn't what was causing it seemed very minor There is some stuff on the side there that may be binding. All right, there looks like there's a little piece right up in here. I kind of see a little bit of it sticking out. Right, right there. And, uh, looking up in here, I can see a piece right there. You can probably barely see it in there. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can get that piece that's bound up right in there and free it. So I think that's, yeah, that's a bigger piece. That looks like what was binding on there. All right, so I'm trying to get in between here and here. And I'm like, why not just take that off? It's one of those safety covers. So, yeah, let me get that off. All right, let's see how this works. All right. Smoking Joe. That one's off. That's something.
All right, now we can see what we're working with. As you see, oh, that baby's in there. Like really, really in there. Hmm. What a bad design. Yeah, so it's back behind there. It's like a plate. So it flipped up inside of there. Hmm. All right, let's shed a little more light on there. As you can see, it's that chunk of wood, and that's bent. Wow. I have to try to bend that back. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Now the question is, how do I get it out? Hmm, I'm going to try something really dumb. So it moved a little bit. When I turned it, a piece of wood started working its way up. So I'm gonna cut this across there and then uh, take the top part out and try feeding it some more. This is the hay bale stuff that he was chipping, grinding up, whatever. I can really see the blades. I think I might even sharpen those blades while I got access to it. So what's the dumbest thing you saw on YouTube? Well, congratulations, you're about to see it. I can't find anything to saw with. And getting in there, I mean, I've got a skill saw or, you know, a circular saw. Uh, it's no way I can get in there. And I don't have any blades for the sawzall. It's an hour drive and an hour drive back to go to any place that's got a, something like that. So you're about to see the dumbest thing ever done on YouTube. I can't believe I'm doing this. It's the only thing I could find. Now, how do I get it in there? How do I keep it from trying to cut metal? I mean, I can't even see it. Okay, stop laughing. I know it's a bad idea. But it worked. <sighs> I hate doing dumb things. As you see, there's now a gap here. Let's try feeding it up a little higher. All right, so let's get this on. stuff I use was this right here the copper Loctite it's a good product so after jacking this down I have to hook up these springs and they were under tension even when they were all the way loosened so this might be a comedy show trying to get those connected 
Well, after giving it a good bit of thought, um, with what I have, I think this is going to be the best option to pull it tight. We're going to use leg force. Make sure I got my nut and lock washer. I've also trimmed off the edges on each end here just to make it a little easier if I needed to go up and over. Yep, this is working. Uh oh. The string's in the way of getting this washer on. Probably the nut too. <clears throat> Sort of got the washer, got it on, good. Now with the nut, I don't know. Won't be able to turn it with the string in the way. Got it in there. I just can't twist it because the string is in the way. See, I was trying other things, but it just wouldn't line up, so couldn't make that work. Now for the other side. Oh, I swear this was harder. Wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. All right, so now let's see if she feeds. so I know she feeds now all I got to do is tighten these up so I got the proper tension on them and then I am done with this job and you know what I'm not going to tighten this as tight as he had it and the last thing that I want to do <laughs> I keep saying the last thing yeah there's never going to be a last thing to this this thing's going to be a forever project so one more thing I want to do and is tighten this nut up just a little bit doesn't have to be super, super tight, I don't think. All right, for now, I'm done with this. Just got to get some pictures of the carburetor. So as you can see, everyone, we got some good use out of it, but there is more to come on this wood chipper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one, everyone.